Oh, baby. Let me know if the light's okay. Yeah, the, light, need to move is, it the light is good. Holy moly. <laughs> Whoa. I try to do some foam rolling, but you know, it just ain't the same. Correct. <sighs> and roll credits. Yep. <laughs> hey, Simon and Jesse. Uh, tell me about yourself. I know you have had some imaging taken and you're dealing with some lower back, and I noticed some of your pain diagram kind of indicated a lot of different regions. Yes. Give me an idea what's going on. Okay, so this goes way back to October of last year. I was I had worked out for five months to run a race, ran the race, and then, uh, like an idiot, I decided that I was going to work out two days after, not take a break. I never really took a break uh, when I was training for the race either. So uh, the first injury occurred on pull-up bars, and what it felt like, that was on a Monday, it felt like uh, my neck and upper back popped that's okay. the best way I can describe it um, and like an idiot the next day I decided I'm gonna just go ahead and work out again so I worked out again uh, running kettlebelling calisthenics the, the whole nine yards and uh, my back my upper back was actually not feeling too bad but I got on the pull-up bars again mm -hmm. and this time I decided to do some leg raises and something happened I felt felt a pop in the lower back. on the lower back uh -huh. so two days in a row I got injured and then after a couple days because that was while I was in the field working mm -hmm. a couple days later things started to feel a little better in the low back because mm -hmm. I've had low back problems on the right side okay. for a long time okay. and then uh, lo and behold I'm going to do some yard work and then that's that just killed me I okay. mean it, it about put me on the floor what what position for your neck what position were you in if you can recall were you and when you felt it pop? Were you bent forward? Were you? I I was, I was up right about chin level with a pull up bar. Uh -huh. Right about there is where I felt. And you felt pop. it in the lower neck, kind of. Make a pop. It, it it felt kind of like the lower neck or possibly Upper between back. the shoulder, shoulder blades. blades kind of, you're pulling like this towards yourself. Yeah, but I didn't okay. know if it was referred. Anyway, so okay. that's when I got down. I'm like, oh man, you know okay. what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, a couple of things. You know, mechanically, when we're when we're doing exercises, we have. We want our whole spine to be working as a team. Very commonly, especially when you're doing a pull-up bar, your chest has got to be locked, right? Because yes. you don't you don't do it like this, <laughs> right? You lock your chest to do the exercise, right? Or if you're bench pressing, no mobility of my chest is required to bench press, right? Nobody bench presses with a loose chest. They shouldn't. <laughs> so right, well, it's a poor technique. But my point is that. Some vertebrae has to move, right? Mechanically, if, if my chest is locked, then usually the areas above and below are more likely to be the ones that the forces go into. The imaging that you have, I, I, I kind of find it, you know, it's very interesting because you have x-rays taken and MRIs, which is one of the things that uh, I like MRIs because they give a higher level of detail. And in, in this case, we could sort of see both scenarios where I believe the x-ray doesn't doesn't serve you justice in showing the extent of your injuries. And I think you've already been over these images with your doctors, but yes. this is a brief. With well, your cervical MRI, we have three levels of disc injury, right? So this, the, this we're looking to our, our left, your jaw would be over here. These little uh, pieces of cartilage here are the discs. And let me zoom in a little bit more. You know, right, these three levels here, there's disc injury hitting the spinal cord there. So the bone has actually grown a little bit there. It's actually pushing out the ligament called the posterior longitudinal ligament, and that's inflaming and hitting the spinal cord. This is what's gonna give you symptoms down your arms, pressure, even uh, shoulder blade pain, shoulder pain, arm pain, all of that comes from your lower neck is older than you are. So, you know, the I would say this is like a 70 year old lower neck. The good news is how young and brand new your upper neck is, and that's where we're gonna spend some time today. Okay loosening and doing two things, diverting stress off your lower neck. And again, it goes brand new here. So brand new, brand new, brand new, injured, 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 brand new, brand new. And we actually can see the cartilage, which is in contrast to an x-ray where it just shows the cartilage as a shadow because you don't see your ear on x-ray. You know, you only see bone. So we can see the bone. I'll show you the x-ray here. So now we're facing the other direction, but the X-ray shows these shadows where the discs would be and doesn't really give a good appreciation for where that disc is and what's causing symptoms. And you might even look at this kind of X-ray and go, hey, it looks pretty good, you know, other than the alignment straight, you know, the loss of curve. 
that presumably the lower neck's under more stress because the curve allows the weight to be evenly distributed, but because the, you know, this doesn't look so bad until you look at the MRI and go, wow, you have three disc injuries and we, we need care. Mm -hmm. We need disc rehabilitation. We need uh, cervical lordosis rest restoration. And that's how we're going to slow the uh, movement of that disc posteriorly. The disc actually doesn't want to be out there. The only reason it's forced out towards the spinal cord is because you have such interdiscal pressure on the front due to the alignment, right? So there, the alignment is creating mechanical pressure here, and that's forcing it out. This is all pressurized in here. Yes. So it, we call it a vacuum effect. When you depressurize the front, we're going to actually create a movement where that disc is going to move away from Negative the spinal pressure. cord. Negative pressure, yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's going to, at the very least, prevent it from growing farther. We have to be able to compress the back side. So the joints are loaded with pain fibers, and the joints are right back here. So many times, because the joints have a lot more feeling, ah, so we desire to go forward because the joints have feeling, and also the hole the nerve goes through on the side gets larger when we go forward. That's why you see people aging rounded forward. Same kind of things going on in the lumbar. We have the first lumbar We have where we have every, well, this, guy, this guy's a little bit older, but you know, brand new, brand new. Probably about age appropriate. He's about 45. Mm -hmm. This guy's 75. Right. This guy's about 50, 55. So we have one disc injury there where the disc's gone past the back side of the vertebrae. So we have disc material kind of like sticking its tongue out mm -hmm. and hitting the spinal cord. The disc material's hitting the spinal cord. This is what's going to cause leg symptoms. The thing that's important also to understand with why this happened is the discs cannot handle shearing forces and what i wanted to and i'll show you the x-ray in a second and it does not show this as clearly as this picture does is the back side of the vertebrae should always line up so when i go up here notice how perfectly if i took that corner and that corner how they does that make sense yes they all line up yes perfect line up yep. perfect line up this guy does not line up with actually the back side of that vertebrae here Slightly forward. It's, you see what I'm saying? Yes. That vertebrae is forward from the back side of L5. Okay. And that's what's creating a shearing force because if we took another picture of this and the x-ray doesn't, again, show it very well. They tried to with the flexion extension they took on you, but that creates a grinding force. There's a mechanical grinding force. There's ligaments that are torn that if I took an MRI of you bent forward and bending back, you would see this would shift. Okay. And that's what's... Well, I was trying to say earlier about what the discs are like. The discs are like rubber erasers that we had when we were kids. You could take a rubber eraser and throw it in the drive uh, street and drive over it in your car, and it'd be undamaged, right? It can handle compression, right, that rubber eraser. But if I take that rubber eraser and twist it in my hands, I can rip it in half, Yes. right? It can't handle twisting or shearing forces. So in the same way, these discs in here, they don't like grinding, Forces. They don't. They don't mind compressive forces, but they can't handle that sliding force because of the age of the disc. This happened at least 15 years ago. The thing that caused the uh, ligament, to, whatever caused the ligament to tear, which now has caused the shearing force, and now we see the effects of the shearing force, it takes 10, 15 years yeah. to get the disc out there. This didn't happen a year ago, even five years ago. This happened at least 10, 15 plus years ago. Is where the trauma fall on your butt fall off a, fall out of a tree, something, something happened. This was not just living your life Yes. that, that tore that. Um, there's a trauma that tears a ligament that then accelerates the aging of the disc, and now we have pressure on the nerves. There are some chiropractors that want to do things, even in chiropractic biophysics, they want to try to, you know, lift the sacrum. So in your case, we'd you could push here on, the, on, the, on L5, does that make sense? Yes. Try to bend the knees yep. and actually drop that back. I'm a little hesitant on that. I find that any type of care trying to realign that purposefully ends up further inflaming it. So I've, had, I've tried that. I have experimented with a dozen other patients and trying to, some like it, some get a little bit worse. I found the most success is to leave it alone, <laughs> to, to like mechanically stiffen and restore the curve up here and loosen the middle back up here. Okay. And that's what we're going to talk about and work on today. I do not believe it's the best care. I would first go through at least a few months of care, working the areas around and adjacent, restoring mobility away from, because what this picture doesn't illustrate is how loose that is, right? When you move, this is like flopping all over the place. Do you understand? That's why it's injured. So because it's so loose, further care that goes into that area ends up potentially loosening it more which then makes it more mobile, just more inflamed, 
and I don't, I want, I'm ha I would only do that as a last resort, care directly on that area. I believe a better care is to like back brace, stiffen it up, do you understand? And we're gonna restore the you know total loss of curve in your upper lumbar. Okay. And uh, take the pressure off the front by just molding to that lumbar curve and let that be the thing that kind of realigns your spine is the lumbar denerol and we'll talk. The x-ray I was gonna show, say, show you, again, you're facing the other side. But <laughs> the, I mean, you really can't even see it. You know, that, that's where the, <laughs> I, can't, I, wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be able to see that misalignment. That, okay. that forward back movement, yes. to me, is invisible on your x-ray. You, you cannot see the explanation, and even, even the height loss, I mean, there's really not, <laughs> I mean, minimal. Does that make sense? Right. You really don't even see, you see these shadows here, but you can't see the disc. And so again, we're left with, I'm in pain, I'm, I'm dying here, Ed. Like X-ray, a little loss of curve here. You know, and you, do, and you miss the fact that not only two things are going on. One, there's a shearing force. Two, notice how the discs are white. So mm -hmm. they're, they're supposed to have water in them. And as, as the disc ages, it becomes like bacon. It dries up and gets hard. And you can see the darkening. Notice that's a lighter color. That's the nucleus there and how yes. this disc is starting to become darker. So you actually get to see how that disc is aging with MRIs. And like I said, prices of MRIs come down to the point where I'm like, this is, I'm glad they took MRIs to, but yeah. this is a, it just illustrates further why I, I like MRIs over taking x-rays. Okay, one second. Left shoulder's a little high, not too bad. Left hip is high. Okay, relax. Dealing with about a two inch head forward head posture. So the center of your, center of your ear hole should be over the center of your shoulder. Every inch the head goes forward from your shoulders, the muscles have to double their workload. So head weighs about roughly 10 pounds, mm -hmm. 10, 20, 40. So then you do an exercise with the lower neck already mechanically under more stress that then loads it more. It, it kind of amplifies and, and exponentially increases the load that the lower neck is under, especially when you're you know, doing a gym workout. Right. So my first, what do I say, I have golfers that come into me and go say, Dr. Ed, if I can't play golf, I don't want to live. And so if the gym is where you want to be, then I'm, I'm your man, but we got to get your whole spine working, and we have to do things to bring the alignment back into position so that we can do those things safely. Turn your head left. Turn your head right. Is there pain when you do this? More on the right. So when you turn your head to the right, there's pain on the right. Yeah, it's, it's hitting the, the, the pointer nerve. finger and, and the thumb. Okay. Yeah. So it would be the same thing probably with tilting. Like, so if you tilted your head to the right... I, I'm starting to feel it in the shoulder yep. now. If I keep going, it's okay. It's okay. I, I don't, can... don't, don't, I don't need to stress <laughs> it. Just so the point illustrates what's happening with that is that when you turn your right rotation and right lateral bending are the same thing mechanically. They, the holes on the right, the nerves pass through, get smaller when you rotate or turn to that side. Yeah. So when you turn your head right, symptoms on the right mean that the that's the, that dis, those disc injuries are getting closer and putting pressure on the nerves that channel down your arm. When you bring your head up, when you try to look up at the ceiling, mm -hmm. go ahead and try, just gently look up. Is, it, is there the same kind of thing? How does that I'm feel? Just feeling it maybe just a little bit on the right. Okay. All right. And then probably it all goes away when you bring your chin down. Yes. Yeah. So when you bring, when you, this is again why patients compensate and we end up avoiding and you people will go into avoidance for decades. You understand? And that's another, re there's, there's a reason your head's two inches forward. It didn't do it willy-nilly. You understand? It didn't do it for no reason. It did it because I have symptoms and I compensate. All right. Take one deep breath in for me. It's a little setup for me. Then exhale for me. Then I'll go. All right. Deep breath in. Exhale. All right. Deep breath in for me. Exhale. If your chest moved beautifully, I'd be confused, right? <laughs> I had, I, what, what, what was that, Ed? Why'd you do that? I just tried to ask 12 vertebrae to move. I got maybe four or five, okay. right? So we, we don't have all 12 cylinders on your Lamborghini engine running, right? Only you're running on four of them. So you're not making as much horsepower kind of idea. Yes. So we need an engine tune-up. We gotta get the other eight <laughs> cylinders working. Yeah. Again, it's not your fault. It's not something that, make your vertebrae move. That's not how it works. We have to, they have to be showing up and then you can utilize them. There's a couple different 
Uh, things that you'll see in case you're in another city, <laughs> another chiropractor works on you, I want you to be aware of this. There is no benefit to adjusting that area that's injured where that sliding force is going on. There you go. Um, the goal of this adjustment is to do two, well, to, to bring you back into that curved position and to loosen the adjacent area. So you'll see me do two things. I'm going to put my hand up in your middle back, try to loosen your middle back a little, a little bit, and then also the SI joint down below. Right. Okay. So if a chiropractor places their hand on your lower back when they're trying to be cautious, okay. just please don't let somebody do that. Okay. All right, put your hands in your belly. All right, take a deep breath in for me. This is going to stretch. I got you. So up here, there you go. There it is, good. Get the idea, right? Mm -hmm. That's your middle back. That's, again, what I could see on your MRI is not injured. This area up here is not injured. His, er his area of injury is right down here. Again, no, no chiropractor should, you understand, know trying yes. to do something to your lower back. Please <laughs> don't let that happen. Breathe in for me. Easy. Get the idea? Mm -hmm. Right, we're trying to loosen that joint below. Other side for me. Someone might say that it looks cooler and if you did a huge body drop on him and, <laughs> and slammed him and got every bone to crack. The problem with that is, yes, I would move the ones that were stiff, but only after I fully moved all the ones that were loose. And so I didn't balance you, right? And that wouldn't be good for you, even though it might make a cool, you know. Yeah. But we're supposed to be specific here, right? We're supposed to be adjusting. We're not supposed to be manipulating. Manipulation is, let's see how many pops I can get out of your back. An adjustment is let's try to focus force into one area and actually try to avoid putting any force into another area. Inevitably, yes, a little bit of force went into your lower back, right? 95% went here, right. and it is impossible to put zero, but we can still avoid putting a large amount of force. Okay. Yeah. For some person on the internet, no, a little bit of force went into L5. <laughs> yes, it's still moving. They're all connected like a links in a chain. Mm -hmm. If I move this one, that one moved a little bit, right. but I didn't directly punch the one that was injured. Okay. <laughs> Incorrect, Dr. Ed. There you go. Uh -huh. Good. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Good. Notice how loose that was, right? That was, that's, that's part of that injury in there. It was like moving before I even pushed on it. Yeah. And that's where, again, I worry. You lay on your back for me. Well, a bit of the self cracker. So. Right. <laughs> Two ways I'm going to help you with that. One, as we take stress off your lower back and the inflammation in the joint goes away, that's the pressure you're releasing when you self pop. You won't feel the need to do that. That's our goal with this is you won't feel the desire to, oh, you understand that mm -hmm. desire to release yeah. that tension in there because, first of all, it won't be inflamed because the middle back will be working the posture will be better. And you. And then secondly, as we get your whole spine working as a team, you won't be able to pop it. The only reason you're able to pop your lower back is because you have this so stiff, you're able to isolate this and pop it. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. One second. Yeah, he's on the left. Uh -huh. This side's willing to talk to me. The left side's kind of passed out. <laughs> Not even awake. I gotta wake him up. 24 vertebrae. We only gave names to two of them, right? The atlas, atlas and, and axis, the axis. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, no, doctor, and lumbar five. <laughs> okay, lumbar five's not a name. That's just like a... <laughs> <laughs> That's lumbar four. Yep. Okay, it's not really... S somebody's gotta find like, a reason to knit. It's like thing one and thing two. Yeah, yeah it's not really... <laughs> Thing three, it's my four kids' names. Thing one, two, and three, and four. Those aren't really names. And they all share the same thing as the beginning. So, right, cervical one and cervical two are never really called C1 and C2. They're, we, we call them by their names, Atlas and Axis. And so we, we gave them names because of the uh, large amount of importance that they hold and effect on the entire spinal health. And if they're not working, we're in trouble. Hello. That. Yep, there is your problem. It's got like a ridge on it. It's a, it's a hip from the left side. 
you know, I don't know. What did you do in high school? <laughs> what was your what was your athletic stuff that you did in soccer and a lot of long oh. distance running? There it is, soccer. So some collision to the left. This joint got injured, and then you healed on your right side in avoidance of it. And like the like you hit a curb with your car and it knocked your alignment out alignment out right and now. Then you drove to California on a bad alignment, and your tires are wearing out unevenly. <laughs> right, so you want to bring the spine back to the right alignment. Yeah, that's the. I think a lot of my neck is issues were post high school, though. Uh huh. The Marine Corps was not very easy on it, and the their martial arts program was uh, pretty rough on it. Gotcha. And at one time, I did have a kyphotic neck, and the first chiropractor I went to, we were able to uh -huh. get get the. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, the cervical curve where, where it was supposed to be um, and then it went straight mm -hmm. so the second chiropractor I went to we did some extreme traction to get that back uh -huh. but that's what 26 and I'm 43 now so I got you all right yeah. well we're not trying to create things new by bringing the curve back to your spine we're trying to bring it back to where it used to be right so it's like you used to ride a bicycle but you haven't ridden in 17 years or 20 years and now you've forgotten and you're crashing all over the place and you're getting mad. This is impossible. Well, you used to know how to ride, but you have to remember how to ride. Yeah. It's a kind of a bringing you back to where you used to be. I don't care. Yeah, right up here on the left. That's the. That's where it's at. You're getting any red and purple right away? We'll see, yeah, let's see here. Might get some right there. Yep. You see it right there, babe? That's the... Have you had gua sha done before, Kavin? No, um, but there is a massage therapist I went to. Uh, she did some scraping. I wouldn't exactly call it uh, Gradston, but mm -hmm. uh, she was doing some scraping. Okay. And yeah, it was getting purple red. She did some cupping too. Okay. Yep. Yeah, right there. That's the. You're just, just restoring the function of your upper neck here a little bit. Okay. Well, I am using a cervical pillow, but okay. I think my my head is resting in the center instead of on the mm -hmm. ends, and that's probably what's aiding in that curve. Gotcha. So. All right. All right. There it is. Oh, baby. Wow, that shot down my left arm. Mm -hmm. Down the left arm? Yeah. Okay, well. Waking it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That left arm's got to wake up. Well, I didn't say it was bad, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Good stuff. Yeah. Now it's gone. <laughs> that bump is. <laughs> My point is that we, now we have to mold it. We want to mold you now. Back into this position. We got you all loosened up. And the thoracic outlet, the funnel that the nerves pass through to get down your arm. And so. It's like the game operation. There's very small tolerances. We're trying to move an object through a small, like a three three foot wide dresser down a three foot three inch wide hallway, right? Yes. <laughs> and if you hit either wall, we're gonna run into a nerve. And so we have very low tolerances, and that's part of what happened when I when I loosen this, a little bit of movement happened here, and then the nerve gets but the nerve's already hyper excitable. It's already got it's already sm smushed in between two objects, and so any little bit of movement's gonna have the ability to compress the nerve and we have to get your upper neck loose and we have to bring your curve back in your neck and then the ability for that to happen will go down as we bring the rib down yeah. as we clean the channel that the nerves are sitting in which is what the gua sha does and the massage uh, so the three components of thoracic outlet vertebrae in the neck going in rib and the upper back going down and then the tissue that the nerves travel through being cleaned this is how we reduce that that pressure on the nerves that go down. Yeah, I got some fantastic tingles in my fingertips on both hands uh -huh. and uh, through the arm. Uh -huh. A lot on the left, some on the right. Yes, I understand. That's just the nerves are already, like I said, they're at their wits' end. Yeah, they're 
<laughs> All it takes is a little, you know. Yeah. Ah! Yeah. So it's a, it's 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 like orthodontistry on your teeth, right? It's two years to me to get 99 percent or 95 percent. That's a diminishing returns curve. Three months of the dental you'll be 50 percent done. Okay. You know, and then in nine months after that, you'll have another 25 percent. So you'll be you'll be 75 percent. So d- diminishing return. As, it gets hard and harder out. to get to perfection, yeah, right? Yeah, so you, gotcha. it, after one year of dental, you'll be 75% of where we need to be. Yeah. And then the next year, you'll be getting another 20%. <laughs> you understand? So it gets harder and harder to get that um, full, you know, it's kind of like sanctification. You never, you never, <laughs> you never reach you never it. Quite right. We're all yeah. aiming for it. That's, that's we're, right. We're aiming in that direction. And so we're aiming yeah. to bring you as close as possible to the ideal position, the ideal spinal alignment, ear over the shoulder. Just for everybody watching, yeah. it, it hurts like crazy. Uh-huh. I'm just not reacting to it. He's amazing. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I was like, you were very calm. <laughs> the lady I go to for uh, when she does deep tissue, she told me right now I'm, uh, she puts the most pressure on me of her, uh, of her of the folks that she sees. Sometimes she has me screaming though. Oh. I told her, I said, don't stop unless I throw up, pass out, or oh. say stop. <laughs> So she's like, okie dokie. <laughs> You're really you purple already right here. Like this. Wow. Yeah, this, is, this is a huge part for why you're feeling those symptoms down your arm. The oh, nerves have to travel through here. And a lot of inflammation. Yeah, there's always cause and effect, right? You have injury, stiffness, and then compensation. Another area picks up the slack and load for another area quits. And the, to me, the job and focus of the care should be to identify all the ones that are underperforming and leave alone the ones that are overperforming because the ones that are over, overperforming and inflamed are actually working. <laughs> right. right. They're actually mechanically working. They're doing too much and our world looks at them and says there's something wrong with them and that they're diseased and then it's like, well, not really I mean the inflammatory response is right. natural right and nobody's poked up here very much right uh, a little the bit. massage therapist did <laughs> yep. thank you <laughs> but you know the chiropractors are not pay- paying attention much into here not a whole lot mm-hmm. no. this is the whole cause and the concept of massaging while you're uh, adjusting Working. or in the, between doesn't exist that no. doesn't really exist yeah <laughs> that uh, that doesn't really exist Ed. So, yeah i've had people that travel the world and go ed nobody does this yeah in and out 15 minutes yeah. right right yeah i find that we can get a lot we would say a better adjustment deeper care and then even more effective stretching because we do the soft tissue work as a way to expedite the time it takes to make the vertebrae actually function Ultimately, leading to you don't need 100 visits. <laughs> You're saying that something like eight, ten visits, we can, you know, have you on a pretty good path for self-care and home care. And we'll try to give you as much as I can today and teach you how to do stuff at home. But it's it's locked right here for sure. This is that's what, I'm glad your massage person at least working on it. But yeah, keep helping them focus up here. Your timing, I will say, doctor, is uh, yeah rather amazing because I'm scheduled for a microdisectomy on that extrusion on the 25th this month. We didn't know if we were going to make it or not. On the L5 one? O- on the L4, 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 yeah, L4, yeah. It's, it's broad based. Mm-hmm. It's been there for close to a year. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but I'm kind of at my rope's end because right. of my pain level right? and the, the symptoms that yeah. it is causing are, I don't know. Sure, sure. No, I'm my, my first, we want to say, if you lived here in Sarasota, I would say give me eight visits. Do you understand? Right. And right. we'll know. Yes. We'll know. Not in 50 visits. Not in... So if you did two, three times a week, we'd be done two weeks, two, three weeks. We would know. Yes. Is this working or is this... Generally, you have three visits of hating me. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm loving this. Three, well, well, tomorrow morning. Right. Like, I got you. Three yeah, visits of the next morning. Yeah. What the heck did he do? You have about three visits of that, and usually by visit five, people start to go, Ed, I see what you're doing. <laughs> I see 
how we're shutting down the area that's injured, that's starting to feel better, and now my middle back's killing me. Yes. But I'm no longer feeling my disc, my disc injury down here. I'm now feeling the source of my problem, the frozen areas that were there all along that I didn't even know existed. They're now the ones that are the, the yelling the loudest. And then by usually visit six, seven, eight, somewhere in there, people, um, we get to a place of peace. <laughs> yes. And the middle back starts to just do what it's supposed to do. And at that point, usually most patients can take the reins, do their home care. My point is that it can be repositioned, that the disc doesn't want to be out where it is, but it will stay out there if we don't take the weight off the front. We can't arch you back because your back's frozen. Yeah. So we have to loosen you up, make the clay soft, make the metal heated up and soft so we can reforge it back into a you know the right alignment. So the the fact is it, it was an injury that appeared to be getting better uh -huh. and I re-injured it from October to February. Yep. And then after that occurred, right. it was not moving and my pain level's been Yes sir. Oh, I don't know. Borderlining on eight, but sure. generally seven to three each day. I understand. And usually it's when I'm standing. I mean yes, that, sir. that makes a whole lot of sense, but it's it's getting to a point where it's right. I'm dying here. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, mm -hmm. it's rough. We I have to. Want, I don't want the the nerve root or the fecal sac. I understand. I do know yep. the fecal sac has some yep. involvement. Yep. I don't want to keep it in that position. Yeah. Because uh, as I understand, and maybe mm -hmm. you know more about this, please, please. arachnoiditis, mm -hmm. you can cause that. Mm -hmm. Hurt so good. Mm. Mm. I'm certainly thinking, like, why didn't I try to get a hold of you like six months oh, ago? Know, it's you know? so tough. It's so tough. Well, it could be because of all the other stuff I tried. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, honestly, so people can hear, it was uh, mm -hmm. chiropractic, mm -hmm. then it was um, it was decompression mm -hmm. plus three epidural shots. Um, mm -hmm. which the epidural shots did mm -hmm. symptomatically, sure. they did relieve some of the weird things that I'm feeling because mm -hmm. now they've had a chance to wear off and that, that, that inflammation down there mm -hmm. as well as the mid back is, mm -hmm. it is causing symptoms that weren't there just a month ago. Mm -hmm. Then there's a, uh, let's see, physical therapy, uh, gosh, when I'm missing acupuncture. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the, the whole <laughs> gamut of stuff, it's like, uh, I, mm -hmm. I got to get a hold of Dr. Ed. Yeah, the problem is, the problem with traction is twofold. One, pulls your spine straight. Wrong position. But what, does that make sense? If I traction you, if I just do straight traction, yeah. notice how it pulls us straight. Yeah. So after you leave the office, you're actually in the same or worse alignment. We're now straight all the work. Right when you take that first step, it goes right back to the area that's injured. Yay. You didn't put the curve back in. So that's supposed to be, not supposed to be ortho, right? It's supposed to be lordotic. Yes. Curved. Lordotic, yeah. Second problem with straight traction is that the disc is actually glued to the bone called the end plate. So when that disc is sandwiched in between the bone, they're actually in contact and glued to the end plate. So when you traction the vertebrae, you're actually pulling the disc open and any tears in the annulus or the outer part of the disc actually get gaped and kind of like a cut on your skin and you just pull it open. Okay. Right? You're actually tearing the wounds open. Now that disc has no feeling, so you can't feel it. You don't do straight traction inversion, pulling, because it's one, the wrong alignment, and two, and then where's the most traction happening in the loose areas or the stiff areas? Which, which vertebrae are tractioning the most when you're being uh, tractioned? Oh, loose. <laughs> it got, okay, now I... So you're not doing yeah. anything to the stiff area? Yeah. Traction? <laughs> no, you don't do that to the disc, but again, they get away with it because the disc doesn't have any feeling, and we don't know that we're damaging it. Um, we can't feel it. That, that, well, it didn't hurt it. It felt pretty good while I was doing it. Right, right. Yeah, because the disc wasn't feeling anything. You can't feel any tears yeah. in the discs. Those, those discs, you could be shredding them more and you have no idea. So this is all clogged. All these marks represent the congestion and stiffness and um, lock that has been in here. You crack that tooth, it's, it's time to give it a break.
and we ha you've established habits, you know, over a long period of time. And Cognitive dissonance. Right. Yeah. Right. What a terrible thing sometimes. You're gonna find some good stuff down here. Ooh, yeah, you're gonna find some good stuff down here. <sighs> I try to do some foam rolling, but you know, it just ain't the same. Correct. <sighs> and roll credits. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get into a position to even foam roll it is is difficult. Mm. So what I'm feeling right now is my ears, uh -huh. my fingertips, my forearms, I mean my my fingers are literally contracting right now. My forearms are getting tight. Yeah, put them um, underneath your thigh, put them underneath your thigh. Put them underneath your thigh, put both of them. Oh, okay, you don't want me to go into shock or pass out. Um, my, my massage therapist did this. We just keep going. I haven't passed out yet, no, no, but it's been worse. This is 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 this a nerve? Is this a nerve issue? This is the, because the table's holding your head back. Oh, what? Okay. Do you understand? That's all okay. that is. I got you. The table's not letting you. Like I said, I was trying to say earlier, you've stretched what face down now for about thirty minutes now, forty uh, minutes. Okay. You understand? Okay. Your head is being held in the position it's supposed to be in, but you're, it's not letting you compensate. You okay. I mean, I can. The idea, the way we can alleviate this is I could lift this chest piece and then no, let the head piece no. drop, and then I could let you put your head forward, and yeah. then it would go away. No, no, I'm, but I'm good. The, the goal of the care is to bring you upright. One of the things I showed you or I was looking at when you were standing is that your head's two inches forward. Okay, yeah. What does that mean? It means that being in neutral isn't going to be comfortable. Okay. That your head's in avoidance, and this table, face down, doesn't let you avoid. Gotcha. And... Okay. When you're face down on any table. Now, I don't like hitting nerves. Do you understand? Yes. If we're hitting the nerve, I don't believe it's good to power through that. I would try to move. You understand? Yeah. Now, as we do more on the dental, that won't happen. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. Fairly quickly, by visit three through five, that symptom should be gone. Typically, do you understand? I do. But um, I so if that is happening in other places, offices, I would try to move your arm up and down, put it underneath you. You understand? Bringing so bringing your arm in the position now opens up this channel and yes. it should go away a little yeah. bit. But that's again, I'm, I'm just we're compensating. We're just moving the we're made up of little holes with wires going through them. Yeah. <laughs> right. So if I move your arm around, I can change the position of that hole and oh, it's gone. It's gone away. Ed. Right. It's not really gone away. It's just I, I moved the mechanically open it up a little bit, but uh, you should be able to have your arms down there and that doesn't happen. That's happening because you're on low tread. You know, there's not much tolerance for you know, bringing you back. Hence why your head's forward, hence why you're here and why there's disc injury. Yeah. He's, Are you okay though? Do you need... Did it, cal did it calm down? Did it calm down? Uh, ever so slightly. Slightly? Yeah, yeah but wait, I mean, like, lift, sit up for me a little bit. I'll show you. I'll show you. Yeah, just time. Easy, easy. Yeah, just, just come up a little bit for me. I can show you how on this table it can be. The idea would be this. Easy, easy. All right, lay back face down if you can. There you go. Easy, easy. Do you want water? No, I'm good. Yeah, this has happened like five times now, and it's really, okay. Now that should, that should calm it down now, because now I'm letting your head go forward. Do you understand? Yeah. I'm letting, it, I'm letting you avoid, and it'll get better. Now, I guess at a massage, if they don't have the ability for this, then put a pillow underneath <laughs> your chest. Okay. You understand? Yes. You can put a pillow underneath your chest to elevate your chest to let your head. Does that make sense? It, it does, Straight yes. Straight forward. Now, that shouldn't be a long-term crutch that we give you. It is something that we should work through. But I don't want to sit there and upset the nerves. Do you okay. understand? I don't, yes. find, I don't think that's beneficial either. Let me know if the light's okay. Yeah, the, light, to move at all. the light is good. It's crazy. It's just so purple. Holy moly. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's I, clogged. That's clogged. Yeah. This is all 
So when you're bending, no wonder you're poor lower back. And then when you're tractioning, this ain't this ain't traction. That's all frozen. It's all destroyed down here, and your lower neck is doing all. I mean, you can see, but there, all the bending happens right in that little crease there. Yeah. That's where all. So I'm trying to create a new crease up there at the top, where you're not injured, and make a new fold like a piece of paper. You kept folding it back and forth in the same crease, and now it's starting to tear. Yeah. We have to create a new. I'll get that pack of hot dogs fold going on back there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You press back with your shoulder. Good, okay. Right, I'm going to tilt you to the right, tilt right. Tilt right. Okay. Can you explain what this is? <laughs> there's tell you what, let me take sure. your glasses. There's, there's adhesions that form behind the ear. What is the scar here? Is this from the scar on the right side? What is that from? Is it just from your glasses? I that's just your glasses. I think so. I don't recall getting injured back then. Oh, that's just, his glasses. Just his glasses have been on there. So how, how were you first had glasses? Say again? How, when, what, what age did you start wearing glasses? Oh, ninth grade. Interesting, because actually your bone has like gotten like dents in them here. Cool. From your... <laughs> Maybe not so tight on the head. I don't know. <laughs> that would require him to go to an eye doctor. Okay. Doctor, like your head's wider than the... I mean, like, it's actually, I mean, this, this bump here is not normal. Like, it's, it's Do you know how annoying it is, though, to have your glasses sliding around? Okay, fair enough, but you got them so tight that they've actually dented like your how your thumbs are growing because of your jaw. You uh, just got to... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like smooth here. Yes, I feel the right. smoothness. Smoothness. <laughs> you have a... a you, you, you're, you're, not, you're not wrong about that. <laughs> I'm just saying. Whatever, no one cares. I'm just saying, this, <laughs> your poor skull's been dented. I got you tilt left. So, especially with a dent behind your ear, it's very plausible that the channels that drain your sinuses and your ear and your face drain right past that, mm. right? This area is the highway that drain ultimately to your blood system and you pee stuff out. So your sinuses, your <laughs> frontal... Yeah. That's the highway, and the dent is right in my road. There's like a big speed bump that potentially. Device is called a lumbar denerol. It is a orthotic used to do two things: one, loosen an area that's stiff and maintain its mobility, and then two, bring the spine back into its lordotic curve, the arch. I have some books behind your head to reduce the depth. The most important thing when stretching on a denerol is time. We want to first get to 20 minutes of time stretching. 20 minutes is not a made up number. A number I thought sounded cool and I said, yeah, 20 minutes sounds pretty good. 20 minutes is a real number for how long it takes to stretch ligaments. Okay, so the rubber bands that wrap your spine take about 20 minutes to mold into a new position. That is not to say that five minutes is useless or 10 minutes is useless, but you will not see a permanent change until you are reliably getting to 20 minutes on these stretches. The depth of the stretch is not as important. It is important too, but it is not as important as getting to 20 minutes. So at the beginning when you're starting stretching on down rolls, I first want you to get time in, and then we can, you understand? Yes. Reduce, reduce the amount of support we put, behind, we put behind your head to increase your depth to the point where there's no books behind your head, and actually you'd be on a much larger down roll. Can you show your back brace come up for me? Yep. When you're ready, roll your side. Yep, side push up. So I'm, that's really, really concerning and sad that nobody's brought up. It's like $25. It's a really cheap way to, very inexpensive way to get some relief. You know, just put the air down. This is Velcro on the top here. So but you grab it, you grab this. This one goes on top. You just pull that tight, pull that tight. And you get in, you just pull it tighter if you want. But whatever, whatever, however level of tightness you want, you want to, you want to girdle that lower back. Just put the center of that right over the, you know, it's just not, it's not that complicated. Just, just something to stiffen up that lower back a little bit to give you, just when you're moving around, you don't have to be so cognizant of using your muscles to protect it. Now you right. can just let the brace, now you're right, it'll constipate you if you leave it on all the time, and you, maybe the muscles get weaker, but we have an injured disc. You know, muscles, schmuscles, they'll get strong, and you know, but the disc is not a healable structure. Discs don't regenerate. They're like enamel on our teeth. You know, yeah. once you destroy your enamel, it's not coming back. So that disc can be repositioned, it can be rehydrated, but I'm being clear, it's not regenerable. Any tears in the disc don't heal. 
right? Right. We're not in a phase in medicine where we have the technology to regenerate a disc. Uh, they're trying. Maybe one day when they do that, I'll quit chiropractic and start injecting stuff to regrow discs. Because the whole point of why we got to be on a dental is because the discs won't make it to 90 if we don't have the right alignment and we don't have that curve in our lumbar. Like on the x-ray, it's going straight and all the weight like the ladder is going to the bottom. There's your problem. How long have you been in that alignment? Ooh, decades. That's why those discs are not true. Same, same principle, just molding your neck back into that curved position. Kind of middle upper neck, I'll take my hand, place it on my forehead, get my head to sink into it. That makes sense? Yep. And then put your hand back down and relax. And uh, yeah, just same principle, just trying to restore the curve to your neck. It just, its effectiveness goes up when your neck is loose, right? So when your neck is stiff, you know, this becomes a better tool on visit five. You know, up here, and then you'll push to get your head to go over it. It might slide down a little bit when that happens, that's okay, all right? So I want it target the middle, upper neck. Like I said, if your chin is down, we're not doing it right. Do you want me to rotate slightly to either side? It would be to your left. To the left. It would be to your left to okay. work that left knot. Now that would be not more than a month prescription because it will change. I had a patient here the other day and it's gone. Like it's, it's less and now oh, just go center. That's great. I mean, probably by visit, I think he's probably visit five or six and it's, I don't, I don't feel any laterality anymore. So I'm like, just hold it right in the middle now. But yes, for the first week or two, it will change quickly. That left side will go in, the right arm should start feeling better when that starts to, so, because essentially you're doing this. Do you understand? You're in right lateral bend, which makes the right side pinch easier. So when you turn to the right, you're already pinching it and then you pinch it more because you're hypermobile on that side. Go ahead and turn your head left and right. Just tell me how you feel and just by turning how that feels to turn your head left and right. Mm -hmm. Turn your head back to the right for me. How's that feel when you turn? Not too bad. I'm starting to feel it now here. Right side, uh-huh. Yeah. Do the same thing. Look up for me. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm starting to feel it. Just wait, saying. wait, wait deeper though. Wait deeper until you start feeling it. Then yeah. before you kind of yeah. threw it to for sure a lower level. Yeah. It's a it's a process of rehabilitating those discs. 